Konnichiwa, my Ami Gamers, and welcome back to Genshi Impact. We turn to the J Temple worksite to look for Shin He. Shin He has gone on ahead with the sunset violation. Time to return to the worksite and meet up with her. Wow, looking at this, I'm getting goosebumps over this. Oh my god, I can't believe my eyes. How can she lift that massive rock all by herself? She's got to be one of those Adepti, surely. She oh, is. Almighty Adeptus. Please give me your blessing, so that in the coming year, I may reap a more bountiful salary. This is top tier, in size and quality, and the condition it's in is quite simply immaculate. Congratulations, this item is approved for submission. I'm going to award you full marks for the Sunset Vermilionite item. May I take your name? My name isn't important. I'm not even here to compete. I was just delivering this for some other people. They should be here any minute now. Ah, so you're the ones behind this. No wonder. The rarest talent turns in the rarest plostrite specimen. But I have to correct you on one point. It's not helper, it's secretary. <laughs> okay then, Miss Secretary, what do you think of the rock we found? Pretty amazing, right? In truth, it is the finest piece of plostrite we have received so far. If everything goes according to plan, we will use this piece in the foundation of the Jade Chamber, which will enable us to proceed to the next stage of construction. As a side note, Lady Ningguang has rented some dwellings in the nearby area to serve as accommodations for the contestants. If you need a place to rest, you are welcome to stay there. Now, please excuse me. As you can see, there is still a lot of work to do on the building site. Shenhua! Shenhua! Just now on the way over, pretty much everyone was singing your praises! Oh, really? What kind of reaction is that? So strange. Aren't you happy about it? She doesn't know how to be a god. Whenever Paimon gets praised, Paimon can't help but hold her head up high and break into a big smug smile! Like she is the god of emergency food. I've had similar compliments before. Yeah. You call me an adeptus. Treat me with great deference and respect, as if I'm set apart from the common folk. Yeah, cause that's how adept I are. At least the ones we've met are pretty unique and reclusive too. Way different than normal people. But uh, I am not... Uh... Shanna? Are you alright? I'm fine. I've been exerting myself quite a lot ever since we set foot in that abode. Uh, I'm just a little fatigued. Um, well, Byron said that there are some makeshift hotels we can use, right? Let's go check in and take a rest. <sighs> no need. I simply need to find myself a secluded place in the wilderness to sit and meditate in silence. You can't do that. It's dangerous out in the wild on your own. She can, I mean, she's fine. Day, you go and eat something tasty, and when you're tired, you go like that. Yourself like this? Paimon is right. Okay. If you insist. Great! Now we're talking! Let's head to our hotel! This looks more like a restaurant than an actual hotel if you ask me. Excuse me, have you seen my auntie? What she look like? Large tits? Really? That's it? That's how I describe her? Anyway, no, she's not here. <laughs> Hi there! Checking in, are we? You're just in time. We only have two rooms left. Since this was chosen as the building site for the new Jade Chamber, we've had a constant stream of people in this area. And not just workers, either. Visitors, business people, tea sellers, all sorts. So, business is booming for me today. Very few vacancies. You're lucky you got here when you did. Great! One of your rooms is still being cleaned. I, I guess it should be ready within the hour. The other room is just at the door on the left. Here are your keys. All right! Hope you enjoy your stay. Please excuse me, I'll leave you to it. Shenha, you should go get some rest. We'll hang around outside until the other room's ready. Paimon's gonna go see if there's anything good to eat around here. <laughs> Paimon couldn't help but notice one of the guests walk in with a huge grilled chicken drumstick before. Let's buy one for Shenha too. She can have it as a midnight snack. Or save her for breakfast tomorrow. <sighs> All right. I will head to my room for now. If you need anything, don't hesitate to disturb me. 
I'm a light sleeper. I will hear if you knock on the door. See you tomorrow. Mm hmm. See you tomorrow. She scares me with that sound. Goodness. Say hi. Wait a minute, but Auntie said no. That guy's lying. Auntie, wake up. I want to sleep, Chaka. Leave me alone. Why not? I have depression. Don't say that shit. Clever channel, what are you doing here? I come and say hi to see Auntie. My, uh, wait, wait a minute. You're looking at her. You look just like her. Because of a lost shit? Yes, of course. One trust you have met Shen Ho. So, are you getting along quite well? So far, so good. We know from the trailer she's one of her students. Actually, save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor, all the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen He to some degree. Adeptus name. Why pray tell would Shen He have an Adeptus name? Uh, they call name is fine. Don't all Adepti have a special title they go by? She's not a god 100%. On the latter point, you are correct. However, Shen He is human. Oh, oh, right. Wait, what? Why well, was I never? I thought so. I could tell. I could tell she is. You Clueless food. Do you mean to say that she presents differently from ordinary human beings? Well, to start with, her problem solving methods are extremely direct. Ah, yes. She was like this all those years ago when one first met her. In this respect, she has not changed. One first found Shenha by chance in a cave. One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. Being of an ever-vigilant disposition, one entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shen He, then aged around six years old. In her hand, she held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains incarnate. That sounds so dangerous. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally, and are highly reliant on their parents for survival. But not so her. That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. One dealt with the monster, yet she still refused to lower her guard. She even pointed her dagger in one's direction and remained ready to strike. Only after she was satisfied that one had no intention to cause her harm did she finally relent. She then passed out without uttering a single word. In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shenhua might have... Not necessarily. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the god's wrath was gradually receding. Even had the stalemate continued, one suspects that Shen He may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. That's still so dangerous, though! Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Alas, the mortal world is rife with suffering of every kind. And she had experienced her fair share of this, even at a tender age. Seeing that she was homeless, one decided to adopt her. It was you, of course. So when Shenyan talks about her master, she means... Indeed. It is one to whom she refers. Xian He has an extraordinary constitution, making her well adapted to practicing the Adepti arts. All the Adepti cherished her talents, and so we were willing to train her. However, her homicidal urges did not subside with age. Rather, they grew stronger day by day. Mooncarver once performed a divination for her, 
He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of Calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy, she is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses, that her soul must be bound with red ropes to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. The red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also seem to have rendered her somewhat inexpressive. Perhaps the red ropes are so powerful that they have suppressed some of her other emotions as well. It is only by fate that people's paths may cross. Now that Shen He's path has crossed with yours, please be sure to treasure the gift that fate has given you, and take good care of her. Oh, now Paimon gets it. You came out here to check up on Shen He because you were worried about her, didn't you? Huh. You dare draw such a facile conclusion on the nature of one's present excursion? Incorrect. The truth is that while Liyue Harbor may seem peaceful today, danger is always lurking in the shadows. That's your first Ming too. Wang once made a bold assertion that this is to be the era of the contract between Liyue and the humans. Well, one is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. One has occupied enough of your time, and night is approaching. Be sure to get ample rest. So, Shen he isn't an Adeptus after all! She just grew up around the Adepti! Oh, no wonder she doesn't like being treated as an Adeptus! Having everyone falling over themselves to show their respect all the time must be kind of hard to deal with. Tell me, Carlton, did you make her get large tits? No, no, it's not the point. The point is this. Be a good nephew and don't be a bitch. I'm not being a bitch. Oh, T, wake the fuck up. I want to sleep with you. No, get your own bedroom. But there's no rooms. I told you you'd be a bitch. Shut up. Hey, so, Shenhua. <sighs> Master has relayed my situation to you, I take it. Oh? She is listening. I'd intended to wait until you came back before going to sleep, but I didn't hear you come in. I was worried that something may have happened to you. So I went outside to check and caught sight of my master. On Aww, you have she been was very strangely around me this morning, causing me to suspect that my master must have told you everything about me. It's a good thing. After all, master is very talkative. From from God told us, of course. <laughs> It's okay. No. I don't mind. The fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner. You could have told us. Because in my experience, trying to explain is a futile pursuit. Still, though you mistook me for an adeptus, you never treated me as distant and unapproachable. Instead, you treated me as you would a friend. Yes. I am very grateful indeed. Yep. To be fair, we've met our fair share of real adepti too. Anyway, now it's settled. From now on, you're our friend! Whether you're an Adeptus or a human isn't the important thing. First and foremost, we're just plain old friends! Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do, I must say I like the title, Friend, very much indeed. Great! Well, now that we're all rested up, we should start searching for the other two items on the list. But before we do that, Let's go to the building site and ask Ningwong's little helper how the progress is going. After all, Sunset Vermilionite is so rare. Paimon doubts many competitors will really be able to find any. If it turns out some of them have given up already, we'll be able to take things a little more slowly. Because they're big. Right? Oh, and another thing. We bought some grilled chicken drumsticks on the way back last night. We did? There's a place just outside. Wait. Did we, we do that? This one for you, Shenhua. Try it! They're so good. 
I concur. It has a rich flavor. Far more agreeable than those I've cooked for myself in the wilderness in the past. Oh, she did it? Ooh, oh my god, it's Eugene! Sing for me, woman! Oh, the pirate mother! Oh, as in the pirate waifu! It's you too as well! Look, look! The Jade Chamber is floating into the sky! Um, but it seems to be tied down by something. That's because it's not finished. It's not. Basically, she could sing. Yeah, okay, that's the point, yep. Given the enormous scale of the Jade Chamber, we split the construction work into two phases to make sure the structure remains balanced. Wait, does Bailey even know her? Before we find some suitable plostrite, we build the Jade Chamber's keel at ground level. Once the plostrite is ready, we place it into the keel and let the partially constructed Jade Chamber rise up to the height of the surrounding mountain peaks. The remainder of the construction work is then carried out at that altitude. Once everything is ready, we release the iron tethers and allow the Jade Chamber to rise to its target altitude. Miss Bywin, we've brought some new materials to submit. One moment, I'll be right there. Who's that? The construction work has only been able to progress this rapidly thanks to the plostrite provided by you. Lady Ming Wong is most grateful and looks forward to seeing more of your work. Hmm. Wow, can't believe you sourced the plostrite so quickly. It's the key piece of the puzzle. Looks like you beat us to the punch. Um, is that Beto's actually child? The eyes are the same. Or a nephew. I don't know. Beto? You're joining the Jade Chamber contest too? <laughs> sure am. I happened to get my hands on a chunk of Sunset Vermilionite on a voyage a while back, so I figured I'd bring it over. Oh, you beat us! Huh. So even though it's rare, we're not the only ones who managed to get a hold of it. Oh, I've got some introductions to do. This is the renowned Miss Yun, or Yun Jin, probably the most famous figure in the Liyue opera scene. I can sing! <coughs> I did it, but I can sing all the time! Greetings. You know, her voice acting skills sounds recognizable. I can't figure it out. These two are Paimon and the Traveler, both good buddies of mine. And this is... Um... Sorry, I'm uh, not sure we've met. Shenhe. I am there. Mm. Friend. <laughs> Good to meet ya. A friend of a friend is my friend too. Or, as I like to say, a maid of a crewmate is part of the crew. Miss Yoon is also here for the contest. Turns out she needed to borrow a boat, so we came together. Well, It's an honor to finally meet you both. I've heard much about you. Miss Shenhe, though we are only meeting for the first time, I have a feeling that we will get along very well indeed. Why are you Spicy food! You lost just a couple of months! We are knocking alone! To be honest with you all, I am in great need of this opportunity to ask Lady Ningguang a question. That's why I joined the contest. Thanks to my father's connections, I was able to acquire a specimen of the plostrite required. Fortunately, it was approved for submission, despite being a little on the diminutive side. Wow! So it looks like the three of us are competitors now. Excuse me for prying, Miss Shenhe, but are you competing as well? No, I don't have any questions for Ning Wong. I just wanted to help him win. Oh. I have a proposal to make. Was it? Be my wife, and no one gets hurt. Oh, oh, oh! She's only my mother. Run away! Lady Ning Wong said that the first three contestants to procure all three materials will be awarded the chance to ask a question. Well, there are three teams here. We can split the prize between us. Instead of competing against each other, we could work together to secure the top three places between us. What do you think? No deal, fuck off, I wanna do it myself. Ash, that'd be a good idea, why can we do That's that? great, but how does that change things exactly? <laughs> I think I see where you're going with this, Miss Yoon. The plostrite was the most difficult item to source by a long shot. Luckily, all three of us managed to get our hands on it. The two remaining items aren't quite so rare, so as long as one of us finds a way to source it, the other two can hop on the bandwagon. How'd I do? Is that what you had in mind? Precisely. That's a yes. Huh. Interesting approach. Okay then. Alright, I'll go first. I have some leads on these wonder cores. From what I've heard, the core itself is really not that difficult to make. 
The hard part is getting hold of the ore used as raw materials. I'm gonna head back to the ship and ask Su Ling if he's heard of him. You guys... We will head into town and seek advice from Master Zhang of Hanfeng's Ironmongers. Thoughts? You can trust Master Zhang with my skills. Wonderful. We'll split into teams then, and whoever makes progress first brings all of us a step closer to victory. So two moms will go together. I'll go with um a, a child. Yeah, good idea. I'm gonna take off. See you later. What's Kazuma? By the way, where's my guy? Okay, let's go. I mean, he's back in the Zima, so. By the way, what question are you gonna ask Ningguang Yunjin? I'm looking for a venue to host the performance of our new opera. Lady Ningguang has excellent judgment, so I would like to hear her opinion. Ooh, what's the opera called? Paima wants to go see it. It's called Mercy Food Number One. I can't eat. It's not about food. Food, 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 but me. The opera is a labor of love by my father. He wrote it based on a popular urban legend about an evil spirit and an adeptus. The setting is though. I don't think the English version could sing her song, so what was the Chinese version? It's called. The Divine Damsel of Devastation. Shit!